And we're live. Yay. Hi. Welcome. It is Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I am the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. And today we are back. We are in the um, in our studio here in Los Angeles. And we are making a cuddle ball. So before we get too far into it, I want to make sure and talk about a couple things. One is I want you to share the video to be able to win at the end of this we're going to give away a beginner box kit and I'll talk about why in just a second and I also wanted to announce that we are going to be on the road briefly um, again this fall and then doing it again in January but this fall I wanted to let you know because we've gotten some things confirmed that one we're going to be at the quilt festival in Houston Texas in just two weeks I think it is um, we're going to be there on the 26th if I can remember correctly I'm going to be teaching Ellie the elephant so if you are interested in learning how to make stuffed animals I'm going to be there teaching that class and Hawk and I are going to be there in a booth for quilt festival on Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday so you can come by and see us you can come find us hang out. We're going to do some little make and takes. You can make some projects with me. Um, it's going to be super fun. So we're getting that all lined up. I'm going to have a couple of machines to be able to share with people. It's going to be a ball and we're going to have a ton of stuff to share with you, including all the tchotchkes, which reminds me we have the mug. Okay. So we got to confirm. So we have this little mug. Is that the one with the ta-da in it? Ta-da. <laughs> so this one, um, I was talking with Patty over at Casey Maker, and she still has a few of these. So I know that they're not available very many places. So I'm always trying to like look and see who has them still. And Casey Maker has a few. So Casey Maker Fabric and Studios in Mission, Kansas. Um, it's a suburb of Kansas City. So basically Kansas City. Um, anyway, she has some. So she told me, um, I could let you guys know. So I'm put back there. Those are all the fabrics I bought there too. They're so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, nice. um, so the mugs are there. You can also find them at Quilt Festival with us. We will have them. We're going to be with Custom Creations, and she sells a bunch of our kits. You may know her uh, as the Fat Quarter Queen, and she has a website. We're going to be there at Quilt Festival with her. Then in uh, November, on November 16th and 17th, Hawk's birthday, Jackie's birthday, uh, if we're to celebrate both at, um, right. at In Stitches, which is in Dixon. California. Oh, uh, we got the I got the name wrong earlier. The state, the city. Oh, I got something wrong. I got the city wrong earlier. So, uh, in stitches, we will be there on November sixteenth and seventeenth. So, if you're interested, you can come there, and we're going to be filming so together Tuesday and doing a bunch of classes. And then two weeks later, on November thirtieth and December first, we will be at the quilt parlor in Battle Mountain, Nevada. So both of those should have stuff up online soon about how you can sign up for those classes. But if you are interested, feel free, give the store the call, let them know um, that you want to come and come hang out with us. We're going to do a couple more classes, a couple of Sew Together Tuesdays. And like I said, we're going to be at Quilt Festival. So super fun stuff coming up. And, and then just generally speaking, what's going on in January? And then in January, we just hit the road. So everybody who's been like, hey, why don't you come to? Why don't you come to? That's where we're going. All of next year, we'll be on the road. Well, at least for the first six months of the, the year, we know. We'll be on the road and we'll be visiting quilt shops across America. And not just in one fell swoop, but where we just go like crazy. We're going to take our time a little bit more and make our way across America. So if you uh, are a quilt shop owner and would like us to come, please reach out. And if you are a consumer and you want us to come to a shop near you, please tell that story. Um, reach out to the shop itself and tell them that you'd love to have us come to their shop and teach and do a Sew Together Tuesday. So looking forward to that. So next year should be super exciting. And uh, yeah, we've got lots of, lots of fun things planned. So thanks for making the last little tour that we did a super success. And it was- really, You guys really made it so successful that everybody is completely down with us doing this all next year. <laughs> yeah. And we are so ready to come see you. So We are so ready to come see you. Like it's really, it's strange being back here, but- here we are. So um, I think that's it. Let me show you the beginner box. So this project is originally from our beginner box, which is a great kit. And this is what we're going to give away today. So the beginner box is um, a project. We did this at a few different shops along the way. We do a bunch of different projects out of it. And it has six different projects in it that you can make with the three fabrics that are available. So each one will have three different fabrics and you can make different projects out of it. So it's a great thing. It comes with the whole... Um, like educational booklet that we did and um, has lots of good information in there. This is one project that is in here that we haven't done otherwise. So I wanted to show you guys too, in case you're not just a beginner um, and want something different. Okay. 
but that that kit is actually super great and it's available at a lot of stores so it's a great one if you're just learning how to work with cuddle and you're a little bit afraid of it this booklet is super great because it's really um, all beginner projects so this one is a fabulous one if you are beginning beginner sewer in general and also if you're a beginner with cuddle sewer okay all right, so this project is the soft cuddle ball. The pattern is available via our website. So if you go to shannonfabrics.com slash blog, you'll be able to find it. There's probably a link in the comments too, and you can download the pattern. So let's get to the ingredients. What are we going to need for this project? Um, we're gonna need a 15 inch square. Basically, it'll be more than you need, but if you have like a scrap that's 15 inches square, it'll be enough. This is a great scrap buster. Um, so this is if we use two different uh, fabrics, you'll need a solid and you'll need a digital cuddle or another cuddle print um, and you'll want the cuddle ball pattern which we can get from the website like I said you'll also need to have some way of cutting it so a 45 millimeter rotary cutter worked really well for this if you are not super comfortable with a rotary cutter you can absolutely use scissors uh, you'll want the 9014 stretch needle we use from Schmetz you want some clover wonder clips a felt tip marker a coarse clover flower head pins You'll want a hand sewing needle, sorry, just a little bit of sewing at the end. So micro serrated scissors are super helpful for this. So we use Fomore Kai or the Karen K Buckley's. You'll want some polyester stuffing. I'm gonna use the Silky Polyfill from Fairfield World. Also using Metrocene Mettler polyester thread. You'll want a cutting mat, mine is from Ulfa. And of course the By Annie Stiletto, which makes sewing so much easier just in general. So those are what you're going to need and you're going to be able to make this cute little ball. Okay. So it has a lot of variability in it in that like, so we made this pattern a little bit bigger so you could do some fun things with it. You could absolutely make it bigger than this if you wanted to. But some of the cool things you can do is you can mix up the fabrics. This one we did um, cause I wanted it to match the um, bunny honey is what the pattern is um, quilt kit that we have. So we, this is a great way to make a complementary project. So if you're making something, use the scraps and make something that goes with it. I think it's a super fun idea. So that's where these come from. This is the dotty dot and this is the bunny hop. I think that's what I said it's called. All right, here it <laughs> I'm really good at sewing the fabrics and not always remembering the names. Okay. So um, we'll talk about the other ones and how they're different in just a minute. So this is what it turns out like. Okay. This one is um, stuffed with the polyfill. We'll talk about that also. Okay, so what you're going to need is the pattern, which I also need a new printer. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's sad. <laughs> so I printed it out and it looks terrible. But if your printer works better, it'll look nicer. So this is what the pattern looks like when you print it out from home, has all the instruction sheet, and then it has a cute little pattern in it. Okay, so the pattern, if I can find, I have a copy myself here. So this is what the pattern looks like when you print it out. And then you're going to want to um, either trace it or glue it onto some cardstock or do my favorite technique, which is just putting tape all over it and making it stiffer. Okay, so um, it doesn't look great, but it works really well. And it'll hold up a little bit better. What I found is if I just use the paper by itself, every time I use that felt tip marker, the side starts to get wobblier and wobblier, and then it tears a lot. And yeah, so make it stiff somehow, either cardstock or tape or lamination. Okay, so we're gonna take our piece, and we're gonna want six of these. So there's a difference between the wedge balls that you'll find, there are different ball patterns that are available online. There is going to be a difference because it depends on how many wedges you have all the way around what the angle is. Okay, so they're not necessarily transferable. Okay, there's differences between them. All right, one, so we're going to need six pieces for this one because it's cut into obviously six wedges, and that's what the angle is there. So I've got some cut out, and I'm going to show you how I do this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to figure out which direction my nap goes. Okay, so my nap. If I twist it over this way and I can pet it, it goes down this direction. Okay, just put it on my pen. Here it is. Okay, so I'm going to use this is actually a, one I don't use that often. Um, I tend to use my the sew together or the Sharpie pen most of the time. When I am working with the fabric that is white on the background, I like to use one of these pens because they're water or heat soluble is what it is, but it also doesn't go through. So a Sharpie will often show on the back side. So if you're using a white background, use something like this. I don't have my little blue pen up here. Here's an air erasable, air erasable marker from Clover. Same idea, just something that won't show through the back because a black Sharpie will, all right? And I've found that even the 
silver ones will do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to mark a little arrow here and then I can keep that visually intact for me. And I'm just going to trace these guys out. So I already traced, um, yeah, I already traced one. I was like, wait, I did one earlier. I traced one out already. So you would trace the three of these and I'm just going to do two because one is already done and taken care of. And I'm going to make sure and put my little center marks. All right. So I've got my, I just cut a little hole. You can see I bent this and then just cut a little bit so that there's a hole and I can pop my pen through there. And I'm going to go ahead and on here, I'm going to mark an arrow. I'm just going to do the same thing. So I'll trace all the way around. And see, I just hold it. It's close. It's like small enough that I can hold the whole thing. I don't have to try to pin it. If you have weights, you could use weights or magnets. So again, here's the little hole. I just pop my pen right through that hole. Think. Okay, and transfer those markings. And again, mark, that's the direction that it goes. And the reason I want to do that is so that I can make sure that they all go in the same direction. I'm going to Try this one. This one, in fact, the nap goes that way. So you can see the nap. So I'm going to flip it over. There we go. All right. So it's really important you have these on here. So when we put these together, it's easier to keep track of. All right. So we're going to cut these out. And I'm just going to use my rotary cutter. Like I said, if you feel like you need to cut it with your scissors, if you use the um, micro serrated scissors, it works much better. All right. But I'm okay using my rotary cutter. So I'm just going to trace right along that line. I feel like it came in handy that I used to do the um, balance beam because like you look forward, <laughs> look to where you're cutting. Same idea. So if you're to balance beam, it's the same thing. Look ahead of where you're cutting and aim for that. Okay. I'm just I know you've in. told me you did the balance beam before, but I don't think it really stuck until just, <laughs> until just now. That's cool. So I remember like really struggling with like keeping my feet on there. They were like, look toward the end. Keep your eye on where you're going, not where you are. And that's the same idea here. So keep your eye on where you're, where you're going to cut. Okay. So now I've got three pieces cut out. Um, I would have three of each. All right. So I need, if I'm going to, and you could do three colors too and do two of each, um, but I'm just doing two colors and we'll do um, three pieces of each. All right. So once we've gotten those, then we're going to put them in order. So I always say in class that you want to do it ABA and BAB. So this is be my ABA. Okay. Make sure I've got those all going the right direction. This is the one that I already did earlier that is going to, is the opposite. Okay. So you want to lay those out. I like to lay them in two sections. So I would have this section and I'd have one up here that was these three laying together and I would sew one and then I sew the other. So you want to sew these in halves. It's one thing where people get confused. They'll put them all out into a row and then they just sew them together and then they get to the last one and that's a pain in the rear to try to sew it. So it's much easier if you sew them in halves. All right, so we're gonna sew one half and then the other half. This one I already sewed. So we're gonna move that aside and we're gonna work on this side. So another one of the things that I'm doing this time and of course I already, oh, there it is. okay. I am using this stuff. So this is crinkle material. It's a fancy name, super easy to remember. All right, just crinkle material from crinkle world, crinkle world. And it is basically a washable plastic that goes inside of the things to make them crinkle. So I like to use a little bit. If you've been to any of my classes, you'll know I complain about the noise. Um, there it is. So I add very little because I don't actually, <laughs> I don't actually love the crinkle. So I only have it in two pieces and that's what we're gonna do with this one here. So when you're putting this in, then I want to um, bring it on up. So when I'm doing this, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I wanna talk to them. Um, so when I'm putting the crinkle in there, I don't like a lot of crinkle. So I like, I only put it in two of the sections. You could put it in all three of the sections, but something that's really important about it is because it is, basically a plastic, I don't know what it's actually made out of, but it won't, it doesn't have any give. So don't put it over the entire piece. That was what I originally tried to do. So I cut a piece that was this shape. So I cut it and I sewed it over the whole thing. Well, then it lost all flexibility because it was just covered in the plastic. It acted like stabilizer. It acts like a very heavy stabilizer. Got it. So it's the opposite of what you want to do. So what I do is I just take this section. So this is, you know, me learning and you don't have to make the same mistake. Okay. 
So this is my middle piece and I'm just gonna put this over the edge and I'm gonna stitch this down on either side of it. So what that does is it only holds it in this little area. So all of this still stays flexible in the middle because it's not secured all the way. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna come over here and we're just gonna stitch this, kind of just basting it in position. Let's talk about this machine. Oh, yes, so we didn't talk about that. So I'm sewing on the Janome today. It's the Janome Sewist 780DC, and it's a more beginner model machine than my big crescendo. So we're using this one today because I want to be able to show you how great this does work on this great, how great this project is even on a lower end machine. So this is kind of a machine that a beginner would, would want. It has a whole bunch of different stitches. It has a bunch of the stitches that we use, the zigzag and the straight stitch and all that good stuff. It has a speed control, the thread cutter. It's a great little machine. So we're using this one today. All right. And again, it's a Janome. All right, so I'm just going to kind of center this on here. I'm not going to pin it or anything, and I'm just going to stitch it on. I'm kind of just basting it on now, so I don't really care where I'm stitching. Okay, and I'm just using a straight stitch. Cut my thread. Come around to the other side. It moved a little bit, but I think I'm still going to be able to catch it just fine in my seam allowance. So I would cut it bigger than this. I cut a small sample earlier. So then I was stuck with my small sample. Okay. So what happens when you're hurrying. You don't measure it first. Okay. All right. So we've got that stuck down there. Oh, my crinkle. You could probably sew it on and cut the extra off after. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's totally what I did okay. on the other side. Gotcha. And then this was what I had left. Got it. So I, I should have cut two bigger pieces. Um, but I didn't. So anyway, so there we are. Now it's stuck in there. But you can see that this will hold it um, in one place. So that's why we don't want to do a whole thing. Okay. And this one, it didn't matter what I was stitching on, but the rest of it, we are going to do it with a 2.5 stitch length. So that's a little bit different. Weird. You know, it's one of those like visual, visual things where like I was looking at, it, I was like, this looks smaller than that. And I don't know why, but suddenly I was like, did I make them the wrong size? I did not. Okay, so, <laughs> so I have my three pieces. Move my pattern out of the way so it's not confusing. You want to make sure I've got them. Nope, in the wrong order. So this is this is the place where things get messed up. So make sure they're in the right order. Your crinkle should be in the middle. Okay. And you could actually do it every other. So you could do one in the middle and then two on the sides. So you'd have every other. Okay. So if you put it like on all your A pieces. So we're sewing around curves mm -hmm. and on if you were using quilting cotton, you might want to use like pinking shears or something. Right. And in this case, you don't have to because it's a knit fabric. Right. Exactly. We're going to sew this and then it's going to be totally fine. We don't have to clip any of the curves or anything. You'll also notice because we're sewing on a curve, I am pinning para, um, perpendicular instead of parallel to the cut edge. So that's one of the things that I found is that when I am pinning and there's a curve to it, it's much better if I pin it this direction than if I pin it parallel, which is what I tend to do when we're doing straight lines. So we're going to pin it like this. Again, the end and the end, just like this is basics of sewing with cuddle. This makes it easiest if I match the ends, match the ends, match the center. My lines should match pretty close there. Match them a little bit better. Okay, that's what I put them there for. Might as well use them. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to pin here. So this is one of those places too where I'm going to flip it over and on a pin from the other side. What I found is this pinning this curve and lots of other curves is if I leave it flat, it's easier to pin. So if I pick it up, that's when these start moving apart from each other. So I'm just going to leave it here and do it. So now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to pin a couple from the other side just to hold it in position a little bit better. If I do this, it keeps it flatter and I like the way it sews better. So this is a technique we use in stuffed animals a lot. And I'm gonna use it on here too. But as soon as I pick this up, you'll see they start to shift. One of the other things that I noticed when I was doing a bunch of these little samples is that if I get the nap wrong, these two edges will fight a lot more. And if they're right, they don't really fight too much. They just move. But if you have worked with Cuddle very much, you know that they kind of fight and they'll move apart from each other. If that starts happening, check your naps because it's probably that your nap is wrong. Okay, so now we're going to come over and sew it. And this time we're sewing for realsies. So we've got a two point or a 3.5 is what I have here, but I'm actually, nope, that's my narrow. This one doesn't do a 2.5, so I'm going to do 2.6. 
that's my narrow. That's my, right. my where my needle is in the middle. Okay, so we're doing a straight stitch, which is the one. So it's a straight stitch, 3.5. So it's in the center. And then 2.6 is my stitch length. So normally when I'm sewing with cuddle, I'll lengthen it to a three or three and a half. But when I'm doing stuffed things, I like to keep it a little smaller because I'm going to put a lot of pressure on those seams. Okay, so I'm going to start at my little circle. That was perfect, wasn't it? That was crazy. Sort of bullseye right there. I'm not sure I um, can see it. <laughs> it is. It's a bullseye. Just nice. believe me. I so, do. <laughs> so I'm going to do a little lock stitch on here. And then I'm going to go for it. I'm going to sew this at a half inch seam allowance. So the cool thing about this pattern is we have it at a half inch seam allowance because it's easier for beginners that way for sure. This is absolutely a project that if you wanted to shrink that seam allowance, you could. And it would just make your ball a little bigger. Okay. So on this machine, the half inch is actually off the, um, the foot a little bit. But you could run it so it's just right along the edge of the foot. So I missed that point. It's going to be okay. Somebody had a, excuse, excuse me, somebody had a suggestion about using fusible thread in the mm -hmm. bobbin. I've never even heard of that. Yeah, you can use fusible. I'm not sure what I would use it for. Though, she right said uh, if you sew quarter inch seam with fusible thread in your bobbin, the seams will be set when you iron them. That's interesting. I'm not sure what that. Yeah, yeah. well, because this, this thread would be fusible. Got it. So, but I'm not sure what I'd be fusing it to when I ironed it. But that's what fusible thread does. Got so it. use it a lot of times in binding quilts. Got it. So that's where I have used it before. So yeah, fusible thread is pretty cool. It doesn't hold forever, but it holds for a little bit. Okay, so my my fabrics are going down. So I'm going to keep my nap going in the same direction. That way I don't have to keep petting it. For me, it's kind of a habit to just keep petting it. But if you mark it, you don't have to. Okay, so now I know this goes on here. So I'm going to flip that over. Let's bring it over here. I'm going to grab my, all my pins off here. And come back and do it again. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin my center first because that's the one that's easiest for me to reach right now because the others are kind of hidden by the other by the other stuff up here. Okay, so now I'm going to come up here. You're trying to get all of those pin. dots to line up basically. Right, so what I want to do is I want to get through here. I want that to line up with those dots under there, okay? What I found is we used to always, and I think the pattern um, may say to stop here. What I have found is that if I sew this way and then I come back and I open it up, that works best for me. Um, so let's, let's, I'll show you what I mean with that because we do want to keep it tacked down at the end. What happens is we end up with holes up there sometimes. So this is one way to combat that hole, okay? We don't want to stitch over all of them every time because it ends up getting super bulky and weird and you have less um, ability to control it because they're all stitched down. Okay, so I've got my ends done, my middle, and now I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. Stitch and a stitch. And you can see with that crinkle, it really doesn't affect the way that it sews at all. I think if you put it over the whole thing, it would really make it, makes it harder to sew, but this is not bad at all. And you can also hear when it sews over it and like clink, clink, clink. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Okay. All right. So now I've got it on here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew. And I'm the way that you can do this, I like to do it, is I like to put it in so that I'm going to start here where I could see where my thread starts. So I'm going to start at the thread and I'm going to end at the thread. So these, this one worked perfectly. That was where I nailed it bullseye. This is where I got oh. off just a tiny bit. So I'm going to look for the thread and not so much the dot. All right. When I'm sewing it. Got it. So let's go over here. I'm going to make sure that this is tucked out of the way. So this is my other layer. Okay. And that's just kind of folded back. So I'm not going to sew it So make sure that you don't uh, catch that underneath. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So I'm going to come back under here. I can see where my thread is. I don't know if you can. I'm going to get that to, to get in position. Do a little lock stitch here. And then start moving. Okay, and I'm just going to stitch all the way around this. Catching plenty of that. 
in and come around. So crisp when it hits that plastic. Okay, and I can feel I have a double layer right here that kind of comes off right there. So I wanna make sure that when I'm sewing this, I'm kind of feeling for that and make sure that I am not gonna sew that into position because I don't wanna sew that anywhere. That needs to be free. Is that just how thread in it? Okay. Totally looked like there was no thread. I was like, did you lose my thread? Yeah, I did, okay. I was like, wait, I think I might not have. Remember when I said I didn't check my bobbin? <laughs> what, what uh oh okay let me sneak behind you real quick okay there might be yeah uh... let's hang out check out the machine let me see if i have a bobbin in here <laughs> that's full otherwise we're gonna be like how do we thread a bobbin on the genome oh i'm coming with you we're gonna oh. dig we're gonna dig with you there's nothing oh i um, i know where there's i know where there's a bobbin for, that machine. for a bobbin for this machine are we sure <laughs> Pretty sure. Hi, we're here. All right, all right there. Great. <laughs> Thanks. My, my skirt is not really like most flattering to you. Oh, well, <laughs> so we'll move it up. So let's I'm see if we got... oh, the these are just, to see Yeah, that. these are more empty bobbins. Oh, well. Thanks. <laughs> not helpful, Hawk. All right. So let's do this. So let's talk about it. It was so all funny. Right, I totally <laughs> mentioned this before we started, and I was like, oh, totally spaced it. Okay. So let's thread this guy. So one thing. When you are cutting your thread, you should always cut it from up top and then pull the excess from down here. Don't pull it up out the top, okay? Right. That's how thread gets stuck in weird places. All right, I'm coming around. All right, we don't want to do that. So we're going to come Point around here. So here's my little, my little picture that's going to tell me what to do. I need to come around this piece. I need to come around over here. I need to stick this through the hole that's in the bottom. There's the hole. Yeah, there's a little plastic bit. There we go. Okay. So now with this one, I'm going to hold this and I'm going to start it. Let me see if I need to do something there. Let's see. Nope, it's going to work. Okay, so I'm going to hold this just the slightest bit to get it started and make sure that it doesn't suck it back in. Okay, I will tell you that there are machines like my Bernina that you do not hold it. Okay. And if you hold it, you will mess it up. So make sure that you read your owner's manual. I know reading owner's manuals is not the most exciting thing ever. But I'm, really, I'm you will find. I'm actually allergic. Yeah. Well, that's how, <laughs> you know, you end up messing things up. And I will tell you, I definitely did that on my Bernina. And I couldn't figure out why I wasn't sewing right. And they were like, did you hold the thread while you spun the bobbin? I was like, huh, yes. That's why my thread kept breaking. So read your owner's manual. It will also tell you all sorts of things about oiling it and all that good stuff. Okay, that's probably crazy. Do not drop the scissors on your toe. I'm gonna to try not to. Okay. Okay. Good. Clipping Thanks. my thread. Clipping my thread. Okay, we're playing thread chicken like crazy. Look at that one. That one's real close too. Okay. So again, we're just gonna follow. I have the um, foot up while I'm threading this. Okay, that's important because when you put your foot up, it opens up. So you have um, the tension in here is two tension discs that sit together. They are Further apart, when this is up, when this goes down, that the tension discs come together and they hold the thread. So while your foot is up, there's no tension on it. So that's how we want to thread it. So make sure that you're holding a little bit up here. We're going to come around. This is all the way up at the top so we can come around it. Down here. Get around all the little bits and wires and things down here. And then see if I can thread this without my leaders. I might have to do a spit thing, sorry. Let's see if I can get you a little more light. Oh, light's so good. Goodness, come on, where's, where's the hole? There it is, okay. All right, Yay. so we're gonna pull this. So now I can show you, so if I pull this, you can see my threads and they just keep coming, right? Okay, now if I put my foot down, that's where the tension discs come in, okay? So when you're threading it, if you put this down before you put it in the needle, it's a little bit easier too because you won't have the thread keep coming out. So that's just some good helpful hints, hopefully. Okay, get that over here. 
see if I can thread this part right. I'm just following the numbers, man. Just following the numbers. So I come down around here, over. Most problems when you're sewing too will totally come back to threading issues. So make sure to check your machine's manuals, even if you don't like to, huh? Um, <laughs> everyone else. Hmm. <laughs> Reading the manual can be helpful, I promise. Okay. All right, so I'm going to stick this back in here and finish my little, thanks for the, oh, actually, I'm going to pull my thread up first. Little side note. Okay. Pull my thread up, come back in here, put it back over where I was sewing. I'll do another little lock stitch and come back to where I was supposed to be. And then I'll cut it again. All right. All right, so now we've got it like this. So now what happens is we've got all this kind of crazy thing that happens right here. So at this point, I like to just lay it flat and kind of stitch across the top. So it's just really a kind of a little basting stitch, but I can get it, if I do it each time, I can get it to lay down exactly how I want it to. So I can kind of get it to lay out as flat as possible. So if you wanted to, you could totally pin this. You see, I sometimes kind of lazy and just wing it, but you can pin it, keep it in place, come back over here and stitch it down. Okay, what I found is that that will just hold it. So when I'm putting the ends together, it works a little bit better. All right, and that's pretty flat right there. So on this end, I just stitched it all the way up so I can show you. So this is what happens here is it ends up being a little bit, I don't even know if you can tell the difference, probably not. Um, but this ends up being a little bit bumpier and this one I can get flatter. Okay, so this is me just stitching all the way up to the top. Oh, got it. So what I found is if I stop here, I flatten it out, I stitch it. This is faster. This is a better result. Okay. So both ways work because you need to hold it all the way up to the top. Okay. Does that make sense? Are I we getting it, questions? I think, I think it did. No, okay. I think we're, I think okay. If it didn't make ordering. sense, let me know. All right. So now I've got my pieces. I guess I can look at the arrows, right? Okay. So I've got my pieces done. So I've made two halves of a ball. All right, so A, B, A, B, A, B. All right, makes sense. Got the two halves. So now I've made sure that my arrows are going down. My arrows are going down. There they are. Now I'm gonna match these together. So this is the little bit funky part in that we're gonna match these two points. So if you're a quilter, this is something you've done a bunch of. If you're new to sewing, not so much. Okay, so I kind of just get in here, spread them apart, and then just look at what I'm, make them like kind of kiss together here. Okay, this is the part that you're going to have to give yourself a little bit of forgiveness for, because it's not always perfect. Okay, so if you want to be a perfectionist like me, you can stab it through here, stab it through here, and now they're stuck, so that they should be, as long as this pin is going straight, okay, they should be pretty darn close. What I have learned is that if I kind of give up a little bit of my need for making it perfect, it's a much funner project, <laughs> okay? So we're gonna try real hard not to get too crazy about it. Just kind of get these to basically match. So I'll show you here. So this one, I'm just gonna kind of get them to match. Okay, let me see, that's... That's gonna be the bottom, okay? So we're gonna look at the bottom of it. That's the one that I'm just kind of eyeballing. Can you help me remember that, Hawk? Okay, the bottom one is the eyeballed one. Okay. And the top of the ball is the perfectionist one. Got it. And we'll see how different they are. Oh, I forgot one little step, you guys. Okay, so one of the things that we need to do, I'm gonna pin this side, is we need to mark on the other side where we're gonna turn the ball. Okay, so we need to leave a little spot. In the pattern, it says two inches and two inches is kind of just enough. So if you have um, thick fingers or using thick fabric, you might wanna do it just a little bit more. I'm gonna do it just a skosh. 
over two inches. So what it does is it makes, you know, how far do you have to hand stitch it? If you're not willing to hand stitch very much, make it a smaller hole, but then it's a little bit of a struggle. So I've got my, my marked, so you saw, I marked it against the board. So it's just a skosh over two inches. And I'm gonna draw, draw, I'm gonna stitch a little basting line here that will help me sew them all together afterward. Because as you can imagine, once we turn this inside, trying to find out where a half inch is on a curve on cuddle fabric, it's not going to be the easiest. So we're only at one, so we're just one layer this. right now. Got it. Yep. So I'm going to do one layer at a time. Do it just kind of just past the line. Okay. So just past the line on either side. So a little bit longer than what I've marked. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. So you can see already what this does is it gives me a guideline that I'm going to be able to sew that on later. Okay. So you come back over here. Do the same thing. If I can get that to lay out a little flatter, it would be helpful. If you can see my line, there it is. Okay. Okay, I'm going to sew this just about a half an inch. So this is me being lazy and not wanting to take that pin out after I worked so hard to get it in. <laughs> if you took that pin out, it would be much easier. All right, so now I've got a mark on either side that I'm going to use when I hand sew this closed. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and pin. So those are two to, are together. And I did it so it's just past the past the center point. The center point is probably the easiest because it's the least curved, but it's noticeable there. If I feel like if I put it on the side and it's not perfect, I feel like it's more hidden. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin all the way around this guy. So it becomes kind of like a little bowl. And if you pin it that way, it's easier. So I kind of, kind of just straighten out each little section that I'm gonna pin and pin the quarters. So, so basically we did it like we pin the corners, we pin the middles, and then we pin in between. All right, so same idea that we've done before. Do it again. Now I'm gonna go back over to where I pinned it and make sure that I double pin or put two pins in where I need to start and stop. Okay. Go ahead and put a few extra pins because I don't want it to move too much. So over here, this is where I need to start and stop. And I'm going to put two pins right next to each other because that's just my little visual for me to know where to start and stop my sewing. Okay. So that was my center. And I'm going to move that pin just a little bit because it doesn't need to be right there. So I'm going to start here. So all the way around and come back and stop over here. All right, so this one is a little bit funky because we're sewing in a circle. So we're gonna sew it like this. Um, some machines, you'll be able to sew it right over the end of it. I'm gonna sew it so that if, if it were on a flat a flat bed machine, this is how you'll sew it, it's like this. Okay. So we're gonna come in here. I'm gonna take these pins out and I'm actually gonna pin right across the bottom here because I still don't want them to move. And I need to sew the little L seam thing here. Okay, so I'm going to put this down in the back stitch up to the edge. And what this will do is help that turn all in. If I start in just a little bit, it's easier than starting at the edge and having it suck in. So that's why I always start in and go backward and then go forward. Okay, so once I've gotten that done, then I can turn this. Uh, Tava just popped on and said just, she that. she's watching uh, uh, from her retreat in Lake Tahoe. I know apparently. they're on a retreat, like, yeah. and I'm so jealous. Also, did you see my stiletto? Oh, there's my there stiletto. It is. Okay, I'm so jealous. Have a great oh, who, time out who there. Who else popped on? Kathy's here. Hi, Kathy. Um, and uh, there's somebody else that popped on. I thought that was. That you knew? Yeah, that we met out on the road for sure. It's really lovely. Seeing I, I love how much of the love how much of the community we get to to know now. It's, Put faces to names while we were on the road was great. It's fabulous. Okay, so I'm gonna keep coming along here, sewing it about a half an inch. So when I get to this point, 
this is where it starts to get a little bit thick, okay? And I'm gonna kind of just take my time with it. This machine has been fine with it and sewn right over it as long as I take my time. But that's what you wanna do with your machine as well. Make sure that we're getting it all fed underneath. Okay, I'm take my pin out. Make sure that it's not getting too distorted here. Then I'll come back and check that when I'm done because you really, if you can see it at all, you can see it's just kind of like a big tangle of fabric up there. And I'm, you know, hoping it works. It's a little bit like that blind sewing we talk about. So I'm just gonna work my way around. I guess I could watch the screen there. It's easier than. It, yeah, except that the focus keeps coming in and out because I oh, keep focusing on your knuckles. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's not your fault. Not your fault, though. It's just being very sensitive this morning. A very sensitive camera. Well, if I would stop moving, it would probably help, but that's not possible. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to work our way through this. I'm going to try to aim for that point, see if maybe I can get it. So you can hear it kind of. Mm, I want to say crunch it's not really what it's doing at all but you can hear it kind of working through those layers so what i found is when i'm working over those corners just going nice and slow will help a lot okay so i've seen you reach up, up and do here. a little hand crank before too exactly right? yeah yeah and that's what needs to happen it's what needs to happen okay so i'm going to take this turn and so right off the edge back stitch it cut my thread Okay, so now at this point, no. Did not cut. Did not cut. Got stuck on the foot somehow. That was weird. Okay, so at this point, I can come under in here and I do this where I can check my points. I'm like, okay, that's fairly decently off. So I'm going to go back over there and try to catch that. See, here's my point. My seam allowance, I saw it get too small. So I need to come back in here and take that. So this is where I can get persnickety. So there's definitely like places where I'm like, that needs to be better. Do you know if that was the bottom or the top? I don't know, but both of them are off a little bit. And that tends to happen. It tends to get a little smaller around there because you're going over this big hump. Okay. God. So I'm going to come back and I'm just going to sew a little bit. For me, it's easier to do it once than do it again. Um, than to try to worry too much about getting it perfect the first time. It's just not going to, it's not going to happen the first time. Okay. Unless you're lucky. Unless you're lucky. <laughs> and then every once in a while it does. You come down this a little bit further. See if we can catch that. And I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave one side. I think. Oh, no, I'll go fix both of them actually, because that'll help me tell. Okay. And this one, this is one of those things that I will fix it once. And then after that, I'm like, that's as good as it gets. So <laughs> <laughs> you can do more fixing if you'd like. I do not. I just say that that's where it's going to be. Also, what's great about this quote unquote fix is that you're not actually taking stitches out. No, you're just adding just another add, line of sewing. Yeah. And so, yeah, that saves my sanity. Yeah, because nobody wants it. to take that out like ever. And all it does is adds a little bit of bulk up at the top and I don't care enough. So if you want to care more, you can. That's a little bit better, a little closer. Let me see this one here. That one's a little bit closer. Okay, so you can sort of, these colors all kind of blend a little bit. So you can't see it too, too much. Um, but depending on the fabric, you can see it quite a lot. So that one's not too bad. All right, so then I'm just going to take this out. So you can clip this. And there's a bunch of stitches. So let me, let me show you. So you can, once you've sewn this, you can go ahead and clip a bunch of this out. And you can really kind of just randomly cut it off. 
as long as you're not cutting your seam, you're totally fine. You can take some of the bulk out of that corner. Because uh, the knit fabric doesn't fray. It's not going to fray. Yeah, a cuddle doesn't fray at all. So it's just going to be um, up in there forever and ever. Okay, and the only thing it does is changes how, how thick it feels here. Yeah, and I can tell a difference because this one isn't cut and that one is. So, yeah, but really, once you've gotten into a ball. Okay, there you go. Deflated ball. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so now, I'm going to throw some of our little bits away. I'm going to grab my filling, which moved Oh, across the room. Hold on. Okay. That's what happens when we move boxes. Okay, so I've got my, uh, this is the, what is now known as silky polyfill. I still have it in the old bag. So silky polyfill is what it is. It used to be called Royal Silk, now called silky polyfill. You can find it in quilt shops across America. Okay, super lovely, soft, yummy stuff. And I really do prefer it over the regular polyfill. And polyfill, the other regular polyfill is a little bit crunchier, for lack of a the right descriptor. Okay, so now got our little ball. I have to find a little hole. We're just gonna take this, stuff it, and stuff it, and stuff it. Okay, and I'm gonna get this much stuffed in. So you can see how much I've got here. We're gonna get this much stuffed in, so you can see how much that fills it. One of the things that I like about the royal silk is I just kind of put it apart a little bit there and then scrunch it in. And then I can kind of come in here and I can kind of work it out. With regular polyfill, it tends to be a little bit bunchier. So um, the silky is is honestly well worth the investment in my in my thinking. It's lovely stuff. Okay. We're just gonna work this through. So this is why you want to backstitch and why those L um, bracket corner things work so well because now as I'm sticking my fingers in here this is going to get a lot of pressure because I'm going to push all of this stuff in here over and over again and what happens is these seams get pulled if this stitching is only here that's where it tends to start to break or rip and you're going to have to do more hand stitching to get it sealed up by doing that little L bracket I'm kind of pushing all of the pressure of the turning along this seam line and this corner so it really really helped to secure that that opening. So it's not going to lose any stitches or tear. Okay. Uh, there was a comment. Uh, if you, um, if you added, if you did every other one, cuddle mm -hmm. and cotton, mm -hmm. you, it might add interest for, um, totally. uh, special needs kids. Totally. Folks with, um, sensory issues. Yeah. You could totally do it with a dimple too. Like oh, you could yeah. do lots of things. Um, I've seen it with the, uh, all Lux Cuddle, and I was going to try to get to one, and I didn't do one, and that actually works. It's harder to see your corners, which is kind of nice. It's thicker, <laughs> so it's a little bit, um, a little crazier to work with, but also much more forgiving. Um, so yeah, you can absolutely do that too, and then that's a nice textural thing. So that's probably about half as full as I would want it to be, okay? So I wanted to show you a couple of things. So well, let's show you how to how to finish sewing it first. Okay, so this is going to be this is one that I did. So sorry, we're going to zoom in again real quick. So this is one that I did before that has the little stitching line. Okay, so that was that little stitch that I did. And you can see it on both sides. Look, at I have my needle, and it's already threaded. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I do this. Let's see if we can get this in the right light. So I'm going to come back under here, and I'm going to start where it's already sewn together. And I'm just going to take some little stitches on either side of that line. So I'm going on the outside of the stitching line. Okay. I'm just going to take little stitches. So if I were doing this for reels and I were giving this to a kid, I would do this in probably a little bit smaller, maybe more like this kind of stitch. And then I would come back and do it again. Because this is the this is the the spot that when they you know jump on it or stomp on it, it's gonna break. Okay, so do some double double stitching. So just pull that, bring it nice and closed. Okay, so what that does is it gives me those lines, give me a really straight seam line, which can be really frustrating when you're trying to turn or find where the half inch would be on this fabric. 
to be able to turn it nicely. So when I've done it and I haven't used these little lines on any sort of project that I need to turn, what ends up being is that this seam ends up being really wobbly, kind of a drunkard's path, but not the good kind. So, <laughs> okay, it definitely doesn't look right. Okay, so I'm gonna keep, keep going. A little more so you can see where it was stitched but not too much go ahead and i'm going to grab it from the other side knot it and do that a couple of times and i try to just go through both sides there and then knot it and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and i'm going to stab it out another spot clip that thread and then give it a little pull so now that big tail is stuck in there somewhere i'm not going to accidentally cut my knot which i've definitely done before where I've cut the knot and then I had to re-sew the whole thing. Um, so if you're like me, it's really not fun. Not fun at all. Okay. So this one I have extra stuffed with the royal silk. Okay. This one I stuffed about half of it. Okay. So I don't know if you can see the squeeziness of that. Like this is super squeezy and this one not so much. Okay. It doesn't squish down as much. This one will Okay, super squishy. So if you leave it a little bit um, looser in there, I guess is the right word, the polyfill, the royal silk, silky, sorry, the silky polyfill um, will fill it up beautifully and look nice and full, but then is more squeezable. Okay, so with the regular polyfill, you tend to have to fill it over, overfill it, and it ends up looking a little bit more like this. Not a huge difference, so this is not as squishy. Um, this feels like it might hurt if I threw it. So wouldn't really it's soft but it does feel i don't believe a you more dense. i'm not going to throw it at you oh. sorry i know he really wants me to but i did want to show you <laughs> one other thing so so filling it is one thing okay it's a different result this one has the crinkle in it so you can hear probably um this one no crinkle okay kind of nice in my opinion um to each their own but i did want to show you when you're cutting it, we only talked about it briefly about the nap. So on the pattern, it has the nap running down. Okay. This is important because if you cut it this way on your fabric, what ends up happening is this. So if you look at the difference between this ball, and this ball, you see how the shape changed. So this one is the one that is cut with it widthwise. The long way is widthwise. So the stretch runs along the wedge. So it was cut this way on the fabric. Okay. I'll hold it the right way. Oh. So here, this one is cut this way. So it ends up taller. So what were we saying? It was like a, more like a pumpkin or more like a, no, more like a, I don't know, a squash. A it's taller. Maybe. Yeah. It's taller and skinnier. So if I put them next to each other, you can probably see the difference a lot better. There we go. Okay. So this one is cut this way and this one is cut this way. All right, so this one ends up a better ball shape, in my humble opinion. Okay, this one ends up more circular. Can we have like a little stack? We could make a snowman. Oh dear. Okay, sorry, <laughs> Teresa just had an idea. <gasps> Brainstorm, it's coming on. Okay. <laughs> You spent too much time <laughs> hanging out with the rock stackers. That might be true. So this is this way. All right. Those are kind of fun. That's this way. All right. Which We've had it mean? happen in the classes a couple of times that people have cut them the wrong way. And I remember one time I found it out because somebody was like, well, what if I cut it that way? And I was like, I don't know. And they were like, well, I want to use the fabric that way. Do it. See what happens. This is what happens. Is it elongates and it's because the stretch is in the wrong direction. It's also a little bit harder to sew because when we're doing it this way, lengthwise has no stretch, if you remember. So cuddle, one of the things is it's a knit, but the stretch is going to be this direction. So when we're sewing this seam, it has very little stretch. When you have cut it this direction, this is the stretch of the fabric. So this has a lot of stretch. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit harder to sew. You'll notice here. Yeah, look at how far off my ends are. I'm looking close. So this one, this is the one that had more stretch to it. You can see how far off my ends are. Okay, so this is the one that didn't. And that one's pretty good. It's still not perfect. Oh, well, let's see how the, the other one is. So remember, top top is one I got real fidgety about. Yep. It's pretty darn good. It's true. Okay, so fidgety was good. Not as fidgety, it's fine. 
but you can see it's not as far off, which I think is interesting. So that's just part of how the fabric works. All right. You're also going to end up with a little bit of this sort of um, pleaty bit, and it's fine. And I'm not sure why that happens, and I, I can't care. So <laughs> I'm like, it's a softball. It's fine. It's lovely. Okay. So that is the project. I think that was it. Let what about see. bells? Oh, thank you. So <laughs> you can also put jingle bells in here, and we talked about it. And then it's a really fun little kids project that you could do and you get, if you have like little jingle bells. But if you put a jingle bell in there, you have to put it in something. So don't just put the jingle bell inside of it because all of the polyfill will totally just muffle the sound. So what you need to do, and I can't remember what they're called, but those little games that you would do at the grocery store where you put the quarter in and you twist it and you get the little poppy thing that comes apart. You have a little toy inside. If you have any of those or anything similar to that, that works perfectly for jingle bells because you put the bell in that, put the top on and they shake in there. Okay, so anything that you can do where they're going to clamp together and you can put the bell inside of it, that's the safe way of doing it. Put a bunch of polyfill in, stick that guy in, fill the rest of it up with polyfill and sew it shut. Okay, that will make it jingle inside. So the jingle bells are always something people want to add. And I've had people try to just throw them inside and it just it muffles it. You, they don't jingle. They just clunk, clunk, clunk after that, which isn't as cute. So the jingle bells and the crinkle are a fun way of doing it. You can also absolutely applique or do a bunch of embroidery on the little wedges. Super cute. You can totally just draw these out and then do your little um, applique inside of here and cut them out. Do the applique. Use this as a template. Cut it out to the right shape. So you can do all sorts of fun things with this. Mix it up with the different fabrics. Like I said, mix in the minky, or the, um, the cuddle, the dimple dot. That's what it's called. The dimple dot. Mix in the luxe cuddle. Mix in cotton. You can do it with all sorts of different things to give you some different textures and some fun um, feeling with it, which is great. What are those fun candies that you like? Joy something that have the little toys oh, inside? Oh, the kind of Kinder Eggs. Kinder That's Eggs. That's what they have. Kinder Eggs. You oh, see? You could use that with a bell inside. <sighs> Okay, so I'm going to have to go buy some Kinder Eggs because they're delicious. Um, yeah, and then you get the little the little toy inside. Totally. You're right. So, yes, absolutely. Those sort of things work wonderfully. And you can do all sorts of things to embellish it. Make it so that it goes together with the, like, you could make a little blanket and then, or one of the kits and put them all together. Be able to use it as a, just a so, sort of coordinating gift. I think they're really super cute and fun. And now I need to make a snowman. Okay, so <laughs> all right, so we have a winner today. Did I did I cover everything I did? did? Our winner is Susie K. Congratulations, Susie! You are today's winner for Sew Together Tuesday. We will send you a beginner box, and if you will reach out to us via Facebook Messenger, we can get your mailing address and phone number and all of that good stuff, and get that out to you ASAP. So we will be back next week. We're very excited to have another sort of beginner pr friendly project, but also we're going to um, morph it with some little embroidery stuff and applique. So that's what this guy is. So this is going to be our cute little project. Oh, he's week. adorable. Um, so we're going to be talking about um, making, basically making a little stuffy out of a drawing that you've made. It's kind of what we're doing. So that's what, where this came from. It's a super simple stuffy. This is going to be a great project that you can absolutely use for a little decor. I've made four of them so far, and I'll have them hung up in the studio next week. Um, but you can use it as decor, or it's a great beginner project for a little kid if they want to be able to sew their own little stuffy. So it's a super, super simple way of making a little, little guy. Okay, perfect for Halloween. You also have a little thing about doing it in hoop, too, right? Right, right exactly. Yeah. So we'll talk about that next week. Um, the eyes can be done embroidery or applique. So we're going to have a whole bunch of fun next week doing that <laughs> for a little ghost. Sorry, ghosty. Okay, so we'll be back next week. We'll make some Halloween projects. And um, and then we're going to be at uh, Quilt Festival the week after that. So we'll be talking about all the things that we're seeing there. And it's going to be super fun. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope you can come by and say hi to us there. And uh, I think that's it. Okay. That's it. All right. Until next week. Happy sewing. <laughs>